welcome to the contract bank i'm business attorney roxanne smithers and this video is going to discuss the master website development agreement and as the name sort of tells this is a contract that is going to deal with the terms and conditions for website developers and their clients we've set this agreement up as a master so that if you have ongoing relationships with clients where you are continuing to update and make changes and develop their website that you only have to issue a new scope of work or scope of services and you don't actually have to have the client sign a new contract every time they engage you to provide services to them so we're going to take our way through this agreement and we are going to help you to understand some of the language that's in here so the first section that we're going to look at is the scope of services here we're going to have some general information about what you're going to be doing for the client um, as part of your services but the specifics of those services are going to be detailed later in the agreement in the scope of work and that's because you can use this agreement and issue multiple scopes of work as you do different projects for your clients okay so then section two covers fees and expenses it's going to provide some initial information with regards to how you get paid and whether or not your client will be responsible for reimbursing you for any specific expenses or costs that you may incur on top of your regular rate. In this instance, that may be special software that's necessary, um, special equipment that may be necessary to provide those services, subscriptions to certain content that may be necessary for you to provide the services. And you can negotiate in here that your client is responsible for reimbursing you for those expenses or paying those expenses up front. Section three is going to deal with how the client is going to provide you with the content and information that they want on their website. It's going to give some parameters and expectations in terms of that to make sure that you have what you need in order to provide the best services to your client. Section four will detail and gives you authorization to set up and register domain names, website addresses as necessary to provide your services. Um, if that's not something that the client has already done or is using another service in order to set up those domain names. Section five details whether or not your services will also include web hosting. For some website developers, some of their ongoing income may come from not only developing the, the site and maintaining it, but also hosting the site. Um, and if not, making sure that the client understands their responsibility for hosting services. Section six covers whether or not your services will include maintenance of the website once it is developed. Um, and if so, obviously you'll wanna include and contemplate that in your pricing. Section seven deals with the process by which the parties, either you or your client, can make changes to a scope of work. Um, one thing that you always have to be on the lookout for is scope creep, where you initially quote a price for a client with a specific parameters of scope. You estimate how much time and skill it's going to take. And then as you're in the project, the client comes back to you wanting more and more and more without you having made any adjustments to your pricing or to your timeline. So this provision gives you that power and that opportunity that if you are faced with scope creep, that you have a contractual right and process by which you can update that scope of work or that scope of services to make sure it's very clear what you are agreeing to do. It's also very clear the timeline that you're agreeing to do it within and how much you're going to be paid for that. Section eight details a little bit more about your services and your responsibilities as the developer, the type of deliverables that you're going to provide, a timeline for the, those deliverables, and how you're gonna utilize client input that you receive on those deliverables or to create those deliverables. Section nine details the responsibilities of your client to provide you stuff in a timely manner, to make sure that the content that they provide to you complies with any laws or any regulations, um, that are applicable to the work or applicable to the deliverable that you're going to be providing. For instance, if your client gives you 
written content or provide you with photograph content or video content. It's your client's responsibility to make sure that they have a right to use that content and that they're not breaching anyone else's copyright or anyone else's trademarks. Okay? Section 10 covers the process by which your uh, deliverables will be tested and accepted and it lays out a timeline for the client to test out the deliverables, to provide notice of any issues that need to be corrected, and then to also provide acceptance for those deliverables so that you have a clear process by which that testing and acceptance will occur. And then section 11 details um, the type of documentation and information that you will provide to the customer once the website is accepted once the deliverables are accepted. And that can include files, scripting, programming, code, um, source code form, and any other documentation needed for those deliverables for the client to continue to utilize those deliverables. Section 12 details intellectual property rights. Who owns what and to what point in the process? The way the agreement is set up once you are paid in full for your services, you will assign any intellectual property rights that you have to the content of the website, to the design, to the functionality, to that client. Um, and until you're paid in full, you retain any of those rights. Um, there's opportunities for it to be very clear, a distinction between information and deliverables that you've created specifically for this client and information or content, programming, source code that you own prior to this project and that you retain ownership of. So we make a distinction there that can be very necessary. Section 13 limits the ability of your client to sort of solicit or seal away your employees, independent contractors, um, or vendors um, from your service and sort of cut you out of the process. Section 14 details your representations in terms of skill as well as puts limits on the warranty that you are providing for the services. And it also puts some warrants and representations on the client side in terms of the content that they provide to you. Section 15 deals with confidential information. Both parties are agreeing to maintain the confidential nature of any information that is exchanged between the parties. You may provide information about your processes, your pricing, your staff, your vendors that you use for services, and your client is required to keep that information confidential. Vice versa, you're gonna have information about your client, their business and their processes, passwords, usernames, things of that nature, and you'll be required to keep that information confidential as well. Section 16 deals with the duration of the agreement, the master agreement, i.e. the term of the agreement. And it also provides the process by which either you or your client can terminate this agreement and what happens to any scopes of work or scopes of services that are still in the process of being performed at the time that the agreement is terminated. Section 17 is what we call a limitation of liability. In this agreement, we are limiting both the um, dollar amount that you could be liable for for any damage that you may occur, incur or cause to your client. And we're also putting a limit on the type of damages that you could be liable for um, if the client asserts a claim a, against you. Uh, section 18 covers indemnification. And this basically means that either party agrees to be responsible for the damages or losses that the other party might experience based upon the party's fault. For example, if your client gives you content, whether it's written, video, or photograph content that they want to put on their website, but it turns out that that client did not make sure that they had the proper intellectual property rights to utilize it, either a copyright, a license, or trademark to use that content. And then a claim is brought against you for copyright infringement or trademark infringement. 
This provision says that the customer, your client, will be responsible for handling that claim, reimbursing you for any costs that are associated, and possibly stepping into your shoes and taking over um, defending that claim. Sections 19 and 20 make it clear that you are an independent contractor, that you are free to provide services to multiple clients and customers, and that your client or customer is free to work with more than one web developer for other projects that they have. This is not an exclusive relationship. Sections 21 and 22 detail the law that applies to this agreement if there's a dispute, and 22 covers how disputes are handled. The parties have an opportunity to negotiate. They also have an opportunity to mediate. And if all else fails, they have an opportunity to arbitrate their claims. Section 23 details how notice is given to the parties, always in writing with regards to any issues with the contract. Um, sections 24 and 25 are really guideposts for a judge, a jury, or an arbitrator in terms of how to apply the contract to the dispute. And then section 26 makes it clear that the full universe of your relationship with your client is detailed in this agreement. And then if the parties want to make any changes or modifications to this agreement, both parties have to agree and it has to be done in writing. Okay. At the end of the contract, we have a template statement of work. This is where you'll put in the specifics of the deliverables and the type of service that you are going to be providing to the client. You can have multiple scopes of work with a client that will be subject to the same terms and conditions. That's the beauty of the master agreement. And so it's going to detail, okay, what is the content that you are going to be um, creating, what type of text, what type of graphics, what type of format. Um, it details information about the website specifications, domain name, description, the services that are going to be provided by the developer. We give you room and an opportunity to put together a delivery schedule to start to lay out a plan for how you're going to execute for your client. And then we have payment provisions. You have an option to be paid a fee for designing and developing the website. You can be paid a flat fee for any additional hosting or maintenance or paid an hourly rate for those services. Um, it also provides an opportunity for you to require a deposit for any of the work or services that you're going to be doing. Um, additionally, you can put together in this agreement a payment schedule if it's a larger amount, you want to break it up over milestones of specific either timelines or specific points of deliverables. You can also do that as well and have either percentages or specific amounts due according to those milestones. You also have the option to detail what expenses you will be reimbursed for as well as your hourly rate if you are asked to do work that is outside of the scope. And then finally, you have an opportunity in this document to make any one-off modifications to the master agreement that will apply specifically to this scope of work. We've also included a website hosting addendum. So if you are going to provide hosting services to your client, we've got some additional language covering those services um, and detailing out what that service will include and timelines for that hosting service um, as well. And then finally, we have an addendum for website maintenance. Again, if you're gonna be providing ongoing website maintenance services to the client, we have this additional language that's gonna cover the specifics of what you're gonna do as part of that maintenance, when you have to be paid, and the timeline for that maintenance as well. So this is a quick overview of our master website development agreement. If you choose to purchase this agreement, you will receive it in both PDF form as well as an editable Word document so that you can make modifications and make the document your own. I want to thank you for joining us again in the Contract Bank. And as always, I am your business attorney, Roxanne Smithers.